Welcome back to Case Closed by John Swallow. John has worked in both the private and public sector, first as a lawyer for a multinational company and then as the Attorney General of the state of Utah. Even more powerfully, he defended himself against false charges and beat the government to clear his name. Here's Attorney General John Swallow. General Swallow, how are you doing today? Great, thanks. Thanks for having me on today. Today is an exciting day, and I've been kind of waiting to bring up this topic because it's going to go into a little bit of, I think, what everyone has been wondering, why you decided to study law in the first place. Like, why, why, why in the crazy world we live in, why law was the thing that you gravitated towards, and maybe at the very end, like, why you still loved it. So what, why, what made you want to study law? Well, I think that for most of us, we feel something inside when we're in our younger years that kind of pulls them in a direction. And maybe it's because of, of our innate understanding of our own individual gifts and talents, right? Uh, but from the very youngest years of high school, I felt like I really wanted to be involved in public service. And I felt like the best way I could do that would be to get a legal education, learn as much as I could about the law, practice law as a lawyer, um, and then I, I love the thought of helping people every single day of my career. I help people solve problems they can't solve on their own. And I love solving problems. I love it when a client comes to me with a, a question or a problem they can't resolve on their own and they need help. And I just feel so grateful every single day that I have such an understanding of legal principles because everything about our society runs on legal principles from, from injuries to... Uh, rights to purchases uh, to following the rules of, that make our society safe and fair for everybody. There is the silver lining through all of that, or or maybe the the not quite so silver silver or golden lining is the law and the principles of the law. So I I feel like I am blessed to just help people solve their problems, and I'm paid for it. So I, I love I love my job, and one of the goals of this uh, of this discussion and podcast is is frankly to, to help people understand what they don't understand and help educate people so they can help themselves even more than they do currently because they understand legal principles better than when they started listening. John, you make it feel and look so easy to do what you do. But of course, going to school, going through all of the passing the bar, doing all these things, was it, were, were there some challenges? Were, did, you, did, you, did you have some tough times when going through that? Man, I, <laughs> I remember the very first final exams in law school, in most schools, as I understand, it, at least in my school, they didn't grade us along the way in the semester. Everything righted on a final exam. And I remember the day classes ended and my test would start three days later at night, studying with some of my classmates, looking at everything I had to know and learn and asking myself, oh my gosh, where is the parachute? Where is the exit door? I need to jump out of this airplane because there's no way I'm going to survive this. Law school was incredibly challenging. Um, taking the bar, studying for the bar like I did was incredibly challenging. But the rewards of, of being a member of the bar, that's what they call it when you're practicing law and license, right? Member of the, of the state bar and having the privilege of helping people solve their problem. It's, it must be a lot like it feels like to be a doctor, to have someone come in and know that they've got a problem and you can actually send them home better than they were where they came. It, there's just nothing like it. It's a noble profession. Um, it's, it's regulated carefully by r strict rules of ethics and professional responsibility. I know that's not what people see on TV, but it really is. And I feel honored every day to be able to practice law and help my friends, neighbors, and clients solve problems they can't solve on their own. It's euphoric for me. <laughs> I love that. And for any, anybody in our audience who might be in law school right now or thinking about it, do you have just a short piece of advice? Like if they're, if they're in the thick of it or if they're thinking about it, do you have just a small piece of advice if they want to be getting into this field? I would say it's all worth it. I, I thank God every single day that I stuck it out, finished law school, and got trained to be a good lawyer, and have had the rich experiences that I've had in my career. I can't imagine a career for me that would have been more rewarding or satisfying than the practice of law. And all the businesses that I've been involved in as well, and helping people and clients in business uh, 
solve problems that they have and, and stay out of trouble, right? That's what lawyers do. Amazing. So you practice law, but you also made a transition into politics. What did that look like for you? Why did you decide to kind of jump into that crazy world? What, what did that look like? Well, it literally is a crazy world, and it's getting worse by the day. When I first got into politics about 25 years ago, uh, I had decided to run for the state legislature in my home state. And I was successful. I became a member of the House of Representatives as in my mid-30s. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was... It was um, it was interesting in that you had to understand that like any event that you compete in, it's a competitive environment in politics, even once you're elected, because you have to find good ideas and pass legislation and work cooperatively with a team to get the, the laws passed. And so um, about seven years into my legal practice, an opportunity arose where I was exposed to how to campaign for office and what office I felt like I would be good at in the legislature. I had some friends that I had made that helped me through that process. And before I knew it, a year later, I was taking the oath of office as a newly minted uh, representative. And it opened up a whole new world for how government works. In fact, I've often felt since then that I wished every single citizen in this country could have a one-year at least a one-year experience in the state legislature. They would understand so much more about society and how it works and how government is funded and how programs are funded and, and how much money it takes to run government and how government power can be abused and how government programs can be bloated and be very cost ineffective, if you know what I mean, very wasteful of our sacred taxpayer dollars, um, how freedoms can be compromised or protected by laws. I wish every single person could have a year to really understand how it all works. I think we'd be a much better society if that were the case. And I am grateful I had that experience for six years in the state legislature before I became the attorney general of the state. I, I totally agree. I, I've, never, I've never heard anyone say, like, you, should, you need to, like, it would be so amazing if everyone could be in kind of that office. Mostly what I hear is like, everyone should work fast food for two weeks just to be able to appreciate <laughs> it. But I think it's the same law. I think it's the same principle that if if everyone just kind of stood in the shoes of the people that try to make things better or try to help the world be a little bit smoother, I feel like people would understand each other a lot better. And I feel like a lot of problems could be more understood and maybe resolved a little bit easier. That's well said. I, I remember the first time I introduced a bill um, in the legislature. It was a very inconsequential bill, um, but someone brought it to me and it was a law that I passed, I introduced and passed, that required that when you are on a bicycle and passing a pedestrian, you had to give an audible warning or it was, I think, a misdemeanor or something. Now, I'm not minimizing that by saying that, but it wasn't a very difficult piece of legislation. It seemed like a common sense piece of legislation for me. But it really taught me that laws can impact our rights and our liberties in society. And so as I was passing that law, the thought occurred to me, what gives me the right as an individual to introduce and pass legislation that impacts my neighbor? What gives me that right? And the answer is the Constitution. Under our representative form of government, our Constitution and the laws that are passed under that empower a representative. So the people in my community, they gave me the right, the authority through the Constitution and through their vote to represent them with their voice on Capitol Hill. That was the power that they bestowed upon me, a sacred trust really, and I took that very, very seriously as a member of the legislature because I asked myself, here I am introducing a law, here I am voting on laws, and what gives me that right? And the answer is, the people gave me that right. And it was a sacred trust and a great experience. Like I said, I wish everyone could have it. <laughs> I think it's so amazing how you have the perspective of being able to be in a position when you were, when you, you are still in law, but when you were first in law to kind of enforce and follow those different laws. And I love how you then were in a position that you were actually 
create or helping create and try to to introduce these laws into the world like that must be such a unique perspective on on the the system on everything um what were what are a couple of your favorite memories from being in politics well i can say that i enjoyed the relationships I enjoyed the process, the committee process. I was a committee chairman in the legislature for a two-year period of time towards the end of my legislative career. Um, what I really, really remember are the significant pieces of legislation that I was able to enact. Sometimes when I'm involved in my legal practice today, as I'm helping my clients and I'm working in an adversarial system against another side, I'll run ac across a couple of laws that I actually created. And it becomes a very interesting <laughs> conversation point with the other side. Someone the other day called me and we were talking about a, a law I passed way back in 1997 called the, the uh, Wrongful Lien Act in Utah, which created a real consequence and a penalty for people who were filing malicious liens on people's property. And it created a 10 day process to solve the problem, because usually when someone files a lien on your property and you can't refinance it or sell it because there's a lien on there that's malicious that has no basis in the law, you had to file a lawsuit. You used to have to go to the lawsuit and go through a, like a, a one-year process to get it all resolved. And I created a 10-day process to have that resolved. I was very proud of that. So every once in a while, I will um, run into a lawyer who's dealing with that issue, and it's a conversation point that I actually created that, that law that provided that 10-day remedy um, so when you ask me what I remember most, what are my fondest memories, the people, the process, and the individual pieces of legislation that I thought were very important and that I was able to enact into law to make our society hopefully a little better than when I found it. I love that. It's very meaningful to me. <laughs> That's amazing. And like I said before, you make it look easy. Um, but there were probably a handful of hardships that came with with being in that field. Do you have any hardships that you learned any any key lessons in your life from? Well, I learned that in politics, unfortunately, um, enemies accu accumulate and friends t tend to scatter. And so later in my political career as attorney general, I had some, polit some political opponents who felt like they didn't want someone like me in office and they attacked me and made up things about me and they were ruthless. And even though I was able to, to step aside and clear my name and receive a, a compensation from the state for what they tried to do, the experience really taught me that politics can bring out the best of people and the worst of people. And so I take from my political career the wonderful things I learned and experienced, but I also feel that society is changing rapidly and the system that we all grew up respecting and loving is becoming embroiled with bitterness and backstabbing and people using their power and their positions to destroy people and people's lives. And to me, as a person who wants fairness and a person who wants to help people and solve problems, it's very antithetical to what I think the government should be. And one thing I think people have forgotten is that there really is no such thing as government. Government is run by people, regular people, and Inf and has an impact for good or for, or for worse, right? For better or for worse on real people. And that anybody who holds a position in trust in government, a position of trust, needs to remember that it's people that should be running the government. It's people that the government should be serving. And in most cases, that's how it happens. And it should happen in every case. That's one of the challenges I faced and overcame, which I was grateful to be able to do so. So even, even with all the hardships and everything with it, rolling into our last questions, what, why do you keep doing what you do? What gets you up in the morning? What makes you stay up at, late at night? What keeps you driving to keep, keep going in this field, this crazy field? Well, like I said when we started, law seems to be a silver lining through everything about our society. We're a society of rule of law. Society can't function without laws and rules. Like a basketball game or a football game, it has its rules and there are certain things you can do and can't do, right? And if you, if you don't follow the rules, then you're cheating. 
And if you cheat, then it just throws the whole, you know, the whole process out of kilter, right? And so I see my job as a way to bring fairness. Uh, if, if I had a wish, it would be that every person that deals with everything they deal with in society from family issues and divorce and child custody to protecting our kids from predators to making sure that when you put your money in a bank, you know it's safe, a bank account, you know it's safe to holding people responsible for fairness, right? It would be that, that everyone could understand how all of those interplay the way I understand it with a career in law. And it would help people not make the mistakes that they make. And my job as a lawyer is to advise people so they don't make mistakes, and then to help people who have a cause of action, who have, um, who've been injured in an accident, for example, or hurt, or who've been abused or taken advantage of, or who are trying to decide what to do with their assets when they die, um, a number of things to understand the legal principles that relate to their situation and then help them solve it. That's what brings me joy. That's what brings me fulfillment and satisfaction in my career. And that's why every day I thank God that I decided to practice law and become good at what I do, become an expert in what I do. And I love it. And it brings a great deal of satisfaction. So when I go back to my teenage years, when I felt pulled to government service and pulled to the practice of law, I kind of felt like there was a, just a voice inside of me that said, this is what you're supposed to do. You're called to do this. And it's been an amazing career. And by far, the positives of my career outweigh by far any of the negatives I've experienced. I'm so glad that you were able to follow your gut. I'm so glad that you are here today. I'm I'm so happy that we have that we have someone who really truly their purpose is to just help people with problems that they can't solve by themselves. Well, so. there are thousands of others out there like me <laughs> who probably do a little better job or maybe a lot better job, but I'm proud and and excited to be able to do it. Thank you so much John for being on the show today and thank you for just being able to help those. You're welcome. It's great to be with you.